So this is what we're starting with. We can see Lorenzo's got a lot of hair and a lot of weight, as he said, already on the sides. Um, so that's gonna be a main focus point that we work on. This is just gonna give you a side view. All of this, but we still wanna keep this disconnected slightly. So we might run a delta section in the middle there, and that'll be able to give us a disconnection that is technically disconnected, but only visually disconnected when it sits down here. If it sits back here, it will actually start to be connected. Then we'll run that low fade using our guideline to make sure we keep that quite low and drop it down. We don't want to stretch it out too much because we want to maintain the shape. So we're going to keep quite a tight fade and then keep some weight at the back. So as always, I'm going to use my sectioning checklist, which is five steps, which is step number one is working with completely wet hair. Step number two is grooming in the direction that I'm going to take my section, which I'm doing right now. Step number three is taking that section. Step number four is splitting and step number five is grooming again. And if we follow that five step process, we're gonna be easily able to continually create clean sections. So what I'm doing right now, I'm doing a box section. It's separating my interior from my exterior, which is the top from the sides and the back. The top is gonna to be where my layers are and then the back is going to be sorry inside the section is going to be where my layers are and outside the section is going to be where my graduation and my fade is by separating these key things it allows me to work systematically so i groom a little tip is if i'm going to section to a specific point i can put my thumb in that point groom to the point my thumb back and I'm going to drive this tooth straight to my thumb and then I'm able to just split it very easily. Now clipping up you've got a couple of options you can either clip the knot but if the hair is not long enough that can sometimes be hard so another little thing that I do is uh, I just comb in the direction that I want the hair to go and then I'll just pop a clip in there. We have two ways to attack this. And what I recommend is if you're really confident in your graduating, then you can start to graduate first, which is what most people do. And you see most of it on Instagram and online and in tutorials. But I think people fail to recognize that not everyone is 100% confident at graduating and in control of their mechanics when they are graduating. And if you aren't, I would elect to start with your clippers first because that's gonna give you a guideline on where your fade ends and where your graduation starts. When if you do it the other way around, you have to have such a knowledge of head shape, that this is where the head rounds, this is where the graduation is gonna end. You have to be able to get as tight as you possibly can with your fingers on that point for your clippers to go in. And if you don't do that, then you're gonna to have to redo the whole thing and clipper over comb and scissor over comb and so on. So I would recommend just starting with your clippers if you're not 100% confident with graduating. So Lorenzo's wearing curtains. He doesn't want too much weight. So we don't want to use too horizontal of a section. We want to stay diagonal or above because that's going to allow us to reduce weight a lot easier. Um, I'm going to start with my graduation because I am confident with my graduation. So I'm going to find out the point where I want my graduation to end, which is right here on that rounding. So that's gonna be the shortest point of my graduation. So, underneath. I just wanna readjust that last little bit on top. Take my next. find my point. So this is all the weight that Lorenzo's talking about. 
and see how long it all is. It just doesn't need to be this long. So I groom, take, split, groom. Oh my God. With each section that I pull down, I'm building more and more on that weight line. You can see that last section lives on top of the hair that I pulled it down onto. Let's look at the difference. This is the point of round right here, you can see, because what I mean by that is, if I put a comb here, the point where it starts to run away from me is right at that point. That's where we need to build the weight, not higher, not lower. That's how we get the strong square silhouettes. Now, this side, we can see, the, see that bend, that's the weight. So if I pull this out vertically, what I was saying before is it's represented. There you go. We've got a point right there. If I took that off, I can get a similar shape to that. I'm just using a different, a different section angle. Now I'm gonna repeat this on the other side, and then we're gonna do the fade. You can see where the clippers have to go exactly, but you can sort how short I had to get. So, take my section. Underneath, get as short as I can. Find my short point. Now that's all below the round of the head. Now we're starting to move above the round of the head. My elevation changes. Now I pull down onto previous, which builds weight vertically. Okay, so I come from underneath. I find my point where I've already cut from the other side. I match it up. Then I start to work around the head, which is getting pulled down into previous to build the corner. As I work up, I'm now on the side of the head, pulling down onto my guide, finding it and then cutting right on top, not into it, making sure not to cut into my guide. Pulling down. This bit's a bit confusing because we're pulling down, but we're pulling to the side. So we're over directing on the horizontal axes to build length on the vertical axes. It's hard to follow, but think about it. We're pulling this way, but we're increasing length this way. So, because heads are round and they have a lower point here, our weight line's gonna drop. And for our weight line to drop, we need this to get longer as it moves into the middle. And we do that by pulling it this way. See so exactly where we have to do our fade. I'm just gonna dry this off because I hate working with wet hair with my clippers. So all I'm looking for is just dryness in the area that I'm gonna use my clippers. Now my number three is gonna go straight into this. So this is just mapping my area even further. 
creating what's called my neutral working area, which is the area that is consistent in colour and in length, giving me a canvas to work on. Now I'm going to put my guideline in. I'm just going to sort of follow this weight line. Now what makes a fade look good? It's something called a skin to hair colour contrast ratio. It's quite a mouthful, but all it is is you've got dark hair and you've got light skin. It's a high contrast ratio and it's thick. So Lorenzo has the ideal hair to do a nice tight fade because it's gonna really pop. Now if he had light scalp and light hair, the contrast ratio isn't anywhere near as much. So it's not gonna pop as much. And that's really what we're looking for. We're looking for a high contrast ratio and then choosing the right transition area for that contrast ratio and that's gonna give us our fade. Now I've just taken the guard off, straight down to open lever. Now I'm gonna work my way down to quarter. Zero. Okay, now I go down to my one guard open. My half guard open. Now you can see I'm using a flicking motion, but I'm not just flicking on the line, I'm rubbing through the line and then flicking. Because as I explained in the previous tutorial, if you don't put this clipper flat on the head at some point, you're not gonna get the length that you want. So this is a half guard open. If I want to get that length, which I think is about, about three mil or just under three mil, it's only three mil when it's flat on the head. When it's out here, it could be 10 mil, it could be 20 mil. So I need to make sure I rub through, make the three mil and then come off to increase length. Okay, now I go straight to my open. Okay, once I've gone as high as I want and I can't hear it cutting anymore, that's time to change my level. So I'm really just focused on, because all this is gonna brush back. So we have a lot of weight, but it's, it's on purpose. So we can brush that back. Now I'm focused on this area. Can you see that weight line? So I don't want to come up and just take all my graduation off. I want to focus right down here. Now I can let this top down. Okay, so Lorenzo's hair doesn't have any trouble sitting down into curtains. So we don't need any extra weight, plus his hair is very thick, so I don't need to maintain the weight. If his hair was straight and it had trouble sitting down but he wanted to wear any curtains, 
then I wouldn't have to layer it up here, I could layer it out here. And that would give me more weight to fall in because this piece would be longer than this. This isn't the case, so I'm just gonna layer it as I normally do. So, I'll take a profile section. So I've got my guide from here because I cut this out here. Now I'm gonna pull it up here and I'm gonna use it as my guide. Depending on how much length I wanted to keep is how far back I would go into that section. Now, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take that right there because that's gonna be my guide. I'm gonna pull this up because I'm gonna cut a square line and assess how much length I need to take off, which is about there, which is about what I want to take off. That tells me that I can use this as my guide. So we're cutting square horizontally. That means because this side rounds down, this hair is going to be the longest. Now, each hair on the horizontal axis lives next to the hair that it's the same length as. But this is the same length here, this is the same length here, this, and so on and so forth to, even, to meet this line. Now, the longest point, because we're cutting square, here is this point because the head rounds down the most. The thing is there's nothing next to that hair. Because his hairline goes back. So this hair is next to this hair, which isn't as long as this hair. So if I want this hair to be the same length as this hair, I've got to use over direction to create that. Otherwise, this hair is going to be shorter than this hair. Then you get a point down the middle. up any bits that need to be touched up. And we've already cut the top, so we're not really looking to like recut anything. We're just making sure it connects on this axis. Same thing on this side. Okay, so I continue on this side. Just change to give you a better view. Now, there's my graduation, so I just cut straight to that grad. Now nothing else should reach. It doesn't, okay. Then I can brush this back over. Now I'm just gonna leave that disconnected. You can see that just hangs down right there. We have it all connected through there and disconnected up there. Now I'm gonna put some product in his hair to style it. What I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use paste and I'm gonna blow dry it in. This is gonna give me a bit of hold and it's also gonna allow me to manipulate the shape a bit better while I'm blow drying.
Okay, set it in place. Let's have a look. We're gonna start by just moving the hair around. So right now, I'm just trying to get the air to flow underneath the, uh, if I just put the blow dryer like this, it's not reaching underneath here, so I'm just moving that around to make sure I can actually reach it. Just putting a clip in just to accentuate a bit of the curl on one side. I'm just gonna let the rest naturally dry. So we've got the product in there. What I'm gonna do is line up. I'm gonna make sure that everything is short enough. The biggest mistake that I see in lineups is uh, people not tapering the hairline enough. So we want it to naturally sit. Because if the hair can move, the lineup might be good while it's combed down, but if it's not combed down, then it's not gonna look good. So I'm gonna start up the top by just tapering these hairs so they're not able to move. I'm gonna finish off with a bit of product just to set my style in, which is the paste. 